Hello, hello, hey there, Belmont, Guillerme Soda, and Felipe. Thank you all for coming and being here early on the chat. How we doing today, everybody? We definitely just had, it is time, we definitely just had a new episode of the Cathode Ray podcast come out today. Just get my audio levels checked here. Let's turn that down. <clears throat> so, hope that some of you I can see Felipe said he got to enjoy that. Hope everybody got to enjoy that. And, uh... Lewis said we were pretty funny in it. I don't know. Hopefully we were. Hey, Edward. Thank you for coming today. Uh, but... It was a good... It was a good, uh, look at a crazy... You know marketing campaign so definitely a lot there hey everybody we got some people rolling in more now andre hello hey good day to you david carmichael good to see you here anthony thank you for coming all right so if you're here and uh ready to do some soldering today well let's get let's get ready and uh i am just drinking some nice fizzy water hey shadow mask so no need to worry alcohol free afternoon here so we are gonna get to work here in a second and we will repair a power supply and recap it recap just about all caps there's two caps on here that are not going to be replaced i've checked them they're good hello little pig all right so let's get let's just get back to our desk view and start working i've only got the two views for you today and actually i lie i've got one more view for you because what we're going to do is we're going to remove the capacitors from this all except for this large one and then this real small one right here um down here for some reason these are both difficult to source and so if they test out good I usually try to keep them in there. This one's real weird. It's got like four prongs and uh, a really nuts large filter capacitor that thankfully don't normally go bad. So that's one issue. We need to do that. Probably need to reflow the solder on this whole board. And let me show you why. Hopefully I can get in here and show you. Anyway, if, if anything's off, if my, if my mic's coming in too hot, if the music's too loud, let me know. Um, if it's all good, then hey, do me a solid favor of hitting that like button on the stream. That way, all your friends will know to come and hang out with us on this show today. Now, I might have to turn that lighting back off. I'm not sure if I'll be able to point this out to you. Let me get a pointer. All right, so what I've got to show you here is some bad solder uh, joints, or thank you, Belmont, bad solder joints. Thank you, Andre. <clears throat> so if you look at this board. This is a 90s board. The specific part, I'm going to see how good I can focus in here with this camera. There's a couple issues right here. I was going through and inspecting this for the capacitor kit. And check this out. First off, this right here has an entire... It's going to be difficult to see, but you can kind of see how it has a ring right here. Where my end of my... I don't want to lose focus. See right there, that shat, that that looks like a ring. That's, that's where it's starting to develop a very bad cold solder joint. And this is actually on a transformer. Let me flip this over. It's on the side of this yellow transformer, so it's a vital component. So there's obviously some issues where possibly uh, cold solder joints will develop in here. So we're going to need to reflow solder on the board. But also, if you look in here even closer, and those of you who have the good eyes, you'll notice this white line coming in here. I'm going to follow it from this side of the board. Look at that. All the way here. We've got a partial hairline crack on the back side of this board. I think it goes all the way to C671 right here. And comes all the way down to basically this edge of the board. So, this was working still, even with this crack. But there's some possibilities over here 
So we probably scratch some of this off, this solder mask, and just make sure we have a good blob of solder around here so that we don't have any disruptions. But that's just something I noticed when I was inspecting it. It's kind of bent a little bit. It's not, it's not too noticeable. But <clears throat> it definitely could have caused this to not power on. Yeah, this is the 1340. Hey, PO17. So, I mean, first I definitely noticed the cold solder joint. Then I noticed the hairline crack. Um... But I don't, it's not like anything major. Like I said, it's pretty minor. It's, it could have caused a sever on this point right here, but it didn't. And that would have been pretty severe because that is, I don't know what that is. Is that a ground line? Uh, possibly. So, we're going to start. <clears throat> Yeah, it bent a little bit. I'm not sure, like, when it bent. It was... This is... You could kind of see... I don't know if you can see. It's very difficult. It's like a slight, tiny bend. Like, almost where that red is. I noticed... I started looking closely because this... For some reason, this diode was just installed uh, poorly in the factory. So anyway, we'll get this fixed up, and then, thankfully, we can test it. If we have an issue, we can't get this board repaired, we can use this in combination with another board I have here with available for parts. But I don't really want to do that if I don't have to. <clears throat> so, if you're ready with me, say hello to my little friend. And let's get to desoldering some capacitors here let's get our iron temps turned on and we're hitting you know probably 660 670 degrees fahrenheit on this hacko fr301 that we're going to be using to desolder these parts now before i start pulling these let's look over here at our dashboard and these are the co the capacitors we're pulling from this uh, we're going to be pulling these 10 and replacing them. Oh, well, fitting enough. I don't know how I got a birthday song on the playlist, but I did. And uh, today is not my birthday, but next Wednesday will be my birthday. And that's not a joke. So I guess I'll just leave it on the song and not skip over to it. So we're going to remove these 10 capacitors right here. And uh, have a happy birthday to whoever's birthday it is on July 26th. If it's your birthday today and you happen to be watching, just let us know. We'll give you a happy birthday shout out. All right. Let's remove some capacitors. It's been a while since we've done some soldering in our spots here. I've got my cap kit in front of me. Oh, that's great. Hilarious. Well, definitely let your wife know we all said happy birthday, Belmont. We're going to start up here. Ooh. There we go. Oh, that's nice. PO17. That's awesome. Yes. Wonderful. Happy birthday. Belated or early. Or day of. Here we go. We got our first cap out. This is a 160 volt, one microfarad capacitor, 85 degree temperature, and there's nothing on here. I'm going to say this is probably a Panasonic. Put that over here in our wasted tray. And if we have time, we can test all those afterwards. Now that's C616. 613 is somewhere, right? Didn't it say 613? Oh yeah, that's one of the big ones. All right. 
Now we're going to take out this one. Absolutely. Thank you guys for all being here. Man. I don't know what happened to the jazz playlist. Ark the Herald Angels, man. We are really... <laughs> Somebody's gonna try to claim this stuff. Uh, even there we go. All right, I'm getting a little crazy out there. <laughs> there, I swear I didn't choose all that stuff. <laughs> Jason Statham. Oh yeah, Jason Statham. Last Jason Statham movie I watched was on streaming. It was The Meg with my 12-year-old son. The Meg. Yeah, I know, right? It was, uh, I was just like, wait a second, what the heck's going on? Where's that music taking us? 250, 47, this one's a big one. <clears throat> and then we'll go down here, 617's right here in the middle of this board. This is a little more, uh, more up our alley in our speed here, this music. Do a little bit better. There we go. Six one seven. Now this one is one I have to do. No, nope, it's not. It's fifty volt forty seven. Elna. Eighty five degree capacitor there. That's right, Phil. Hello, Phil. Thank you for coming. Yeah, Christmas in July. July's almost over. Can you believe it? Well, of course the JVC good for P. Of course it is. Yes. Retro Future fan. You're a fan of Retro Future? Here we go. Here we go. We got C619. That's this one right here. 50 volt 10, my dear. Now, as I pull these caps. not to touch anything besides the actual legs of the capacitors and the solder I don't want to touch the pads so much with this because these pads are gonna be fragile C619 is a 50 volt 10 on the cap Yep, absolutely. Time flies, right? Then you have kids, and you just look at them, and they grow. They are a reflection of how old you are, how old you are getting. Six twenty. I think this is the one that I have to worry about the upgrade on. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of low voltage, twenty and under twenty five volts, like ten volt. So, this is a yeah, 10 volt 47. Oh gosh, I think I wrote that down wrong on the capacitor kit. <laughs> That's why I always gotta check this stuff, check it out. I just wrote this capacitor kit out and I wrote it wrong. 620, I wrote 0.47. Need to delete that. Uh, 47, because this is a. Uh, This is a 10 volt. I don't know if you can even see that. It's going to be very difficult. There we go. Maybe. 10 volt 47 Elna. So I can go, a, I'm going to have to get a different capacitor, but I just need to go with like a 25 volt 47 or 16 volt 47. Do, 
Do hey McMuffin, snuffer stuffer, welcome man. Um, so yeah, that's a good reason to check your work, man. That would have probably been a bad, bad move to put that in there. All right, moving on. Moving on to 623. I know this capacitor leg is it was installed in the factory. It's ridiculously long. It never got clipped right by whatever. Whatever robot assembled assembled this 623. C623 should be a 25 volt 22. It is, but it just got well, it actually looks pretty normal. Legs are the same length. One was just really long. Okay. Another Elna cap, 25 volt 22. That's good. Doo -doo. Now we're going to get these down in this block. That's just about all that's left. Six. What's next? We can go with the big one. Gosh, that big one's going to be a pain in the neck to get out of there. Six, seven, four, and six, seven, one are over here. We'll get those out. I got prepped a little early off screen today, so I did clean my FR301 ahead of time, so it should be working good. This is another big one, 35 volt 1000. Use my finger to discharge it in case there's a zap. Give you guys something to see, like last last live stream where I zapped where I zapped that power supply on the, testing it on the last live stream. If you didn't see that, you can go back and check that out. 674. I didn't even see that one on the list. 674 or is it oh yeah 656 i have it listed as 656 on my cap kit always good to do this this is why i don't release these till after i go through them and check them all right now let's get 671 out which is a 16 volt capacitor right in here this one's this one's at the top of the hairline crack, so it's definitely needing some attention. Six seventy one, sixteen volt, four seventy. This looks like a nicer capacitor. Ah, huh, yes, we have a hundred and five degree capacitor here. Hey, roll paths. I don't know what you guys are talking about in the chat right now. <laughs> Alright. Got one more small one down here. 658. Man, I could see that hairline crack all the way through this board on the top side too. It's just like barely below it. I think if I get in there, maybe you'll be able to see it. You see it? You see the hairline crack right there? It goes through the capacitor C671 right next to that induction coil. And uh, goes all the way down to that corner of the board there. See that? Now this is not a double-sided board as far as like tracing goes. Those traces on top there, that's just painted on there for visual. reasons that's it. the traces are on the bottom side all right let's get out these last two <laughs> oh i'm not swimming i just was thought it was funny whenever i look over and i don't know what's going on in the chat makes me laugh Six fifty eight. That one's 
good. Hey, little pig, thank you for $10 super chat, my friend. Appreciate that. And another super chat. I'll take a second to stop and talk to you and see what we got. I just need to check this capacitor. 658. All right. I cannot seem to find a Nish Rubicon Panasonic 0.5 or 50 volt 0.47 microfarad capacitor on Mauser or DigiKey. Uh, I've been using, I wouldn't sweat, I wouldn't uh, skip on Worth Electronics. I use them a lot. I have to use them. You can't just not recap a monitor because of them. So I I, I don't feel um, I've used them and have had no problems. I've been using them for years. Uh, the problem the problem is if you get married to Nishikon and Rubicon, uh, you you can also check. Um, there should be something of that brand. That's not a uncommon thing, but. You, you should check uh, DigiKey also. But don't worry about just those three brands. Uh, you can get other brands and it'd be good. A worth electronic capacitor that is a 50 volt 0.47 is better than these Elna capacitors. Way better than like these Elna 85 degree capacitors that are 20 years old. Or 25 years old in this case. Um, it's way better of a, a capacitor than that. But thank you for the super chat, and I hope that helps. I would proceed with confidence that they're going to be good. You know, those part suppliers aren't going to sell you crap from DigiKey and Mauser. It's like, places you got to worry about are eBay when you're buying capacitors. Yeah, they're they're red, but um, yeah, I've been using them, especially in those common values. Because let's face it, during like twenty twenty one, it was hard to get even capacitors, and uh, I wasn't able to really pick and choose any brand most of the time. I had to just take what was ever available from the part suppliers, and a lot of it was worth. And I was thinking the same thing. And then I researched the company and everything sounded good. I looked, checked out their data sheets, tested them a lot and never had any issues at all. So I'm flooding out this large capacitor here a little bit because it is big. And I just don't know how easy it's going to be to get out of here. But we're going to just kind of move it a little bit by heating up. Getting that stuff down there in the legs because I don't have probably something big enough. All right, let's see if we can get this to. I'll try, see if that helps at all. I think we got one leg broken free. See, once you get a leg free, it's not so bad. It's just getting the first leg actually broken free. I think this one on the left is pretty free. Let's see. Right here. If it's not, it's close to free. All right, let's see about adding some more. Basically resoldered it completely. And we'll come back in here and just do the same thing over and over again until we get it the way we like it. to 
How to get this? These snap-in capacitors are kind of a pain because the angle of the. Yeah. See, it's not one to come out at all. Probably ought to empty my chamber here real quick because just sucked a ton of solder into it. There we go. I do not understand why this is being such a pain in the neck. Now, I don't have any solder wick, so that's no fun. Um, maybe I should just trim the leg a little bit. Less. This is awfully long. Oh, it's just like corner, catty corner, these stupid snap in. Capacitors, I hate them. They don't have straight legs. They got like a hook leg almost. And that's what this is. It's just a snap-in. So that snap-in, it, it's just extra surface area for the cap to dissipate heat. Let's just cut those down. I know I can't get anything to grab onto on that end anymore, but... We're about to pop it. There we go. Check it. See? Got it. Okay. But that's where that, you know, that damage from that cracked board goes actually all the way to that point. So. Poof. I was wondering if that was going to be the case, and it does appear to be the case. Let's clear the holes. So there we go. Snap in cap out. Yeah, that cap's a monster. And it is, look how big that one is. I think that one's bad. Look at that stupid thing. Uh, and it still tests good on the ESR meter. That's why I didn't put it out. But look at the, like, ugh, look how much solder was flooded on that leg. Yuck. So, anyway. Elna, baby. Hey, Pix again, Pixels. All right, I think that's all the caps we're removing. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, okay. So now that they're out. Huh. Let's let's get in here and see if I can do anything. I want to kind of so we got this hairline crack here i turn that light on can you still see okay so we've got our hairline crack you know down in this area um i'm probably gonna rub it off here That portion of it. We'll do that. And then we'll follow this line up here. Where it's over in this. And we'll do the same kind of thing. Scrape off the solder mask. Because we're going to have to just blend some of this together Oop. 
like and my my fiberglass scratching pen here is literally almost out so that's good that's a good spot uh, a lot of dead space there that's right on all right so we can actually fix that no problem what about up here next to a big hole yeah it's a fiberglass pen okay so that like is where it kind of ends at that hole and that's got so okay let me get some alcohol in here and we'll, we'll clean off this area I kind of scratched up. All right, folks, give me one minute. I got to go find some paper towels. All right, sorry about that. Thank you for hanging out. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit the like button. I appreciate it. I appreciate your help there. Hope you're enjoying this different stream. You know, I wanted to just get back to some good old-fashioned work with soldering and uh, recapping. And thought, why not stream it? It's been a while since I've done a stream where I've actually done some board work. The last couple streams have been me actually just going over the board work, not actually doing it. But this was a perfect opportunity to get back in the lab here with you today and work on these. Look at all that. He self-elected. So thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for helping out. With the great questions and comments. And chat. And if there's any questions you got. get to those eventually or you can ask it now and maybe I'll see it but I'm still gonna sit here and work on this board there is our section so maybe even So when I look at something like this, I might even come in here and remove this old nasty solder off some of these points down in here. Like on this that we talked about, this transformer, because it just looks nasty. And I don't see any reason to keep you reusing that old solder. Just get rid of it and add fresh solder all the way. What other pen looked pretty bad? There was a couple of them. See that diode where the crack happened. We should we should fix it so it doesn't just hit me with the pet peeve. So remove the old sock there. 
make sure that see even even gravity and the forces of nature wanted to push that back up because it did it on its own right in there okay we're gonna go through here we're gonna reflow solder on this board and then we'll reinstall those capacitors <laughs> But we're definitely going to start with the solder reflow. Because I'm going to do this whole board. This is the kind of normal thing for this style PBM. Especially this old of a power supply. See how we have to get all that kind of mesh together there to overcome that. A lot of solder in that spot. Do that. So that's that looks pretty good. On that one. That actually looks kind of natural almost. Oh, the other spot. Let's see, this one definitely needed it. That is probably We'll do that for that corner right there. See that? Did you just see that? How about that? That's pretty decent. Let's show you that close up. See that quick weld right there on our edge right here. If I change the angle if that helps any. But that weld right there for our break. That weld right there for our break. Let's get in there. Maybe we'll take a closer look. Silly light doesn't want to look very good for us. All right, come on, focus, focus. There we go, see that? That's our weld repair. Same thing over here. Oh, I guess I'm gonna fill them um, Not so much, huh? Okay. That's it for the repair kind of spots, I believe. Now, like I said, Still a large need for some more resoldering on this board. So it's best to just start and do it kind of section by section. You don't really want to do things like test points and uh, other things like that that are just in there by themselves. You're worried about components and, and you don't need to do a lot of components the same legs right at the same time. Or you're going to have a possibility that something falls out. So you may just have to jump, jump back and forth. Between pins. This point on the side here looks pretty, pretty uh, yeah. bad also over here where our connection is. So it's definitely something to consider this, this whole, cause if you wiggled this connector, you know, from the other cable and where you're putting the cable in on the other side, you would definitely be able to break the solder on this, on these pins. So that should be pretty good though. That's a test point. I'm not going to do that. Here's our diode. And trim that. Trim 
turn that one up. There's like spots that have nothing. Don't worry about that. And then you have spots that have shielding. Those don't need to be re refloat either. Like for heat sinks or something too? No, let's not do those. That's kind of a waste. Unless it looks so bad it's about to fall off. Yeah, normally I would have my fan running too, over here. There we go. We're getting through it. We're getting through it. You gotta do this with this board for sure. And... We also need to do our neck board like this. It's just like a tune up, you know? Even solder wears out. It looks like we got these, but. So. This is something that's been a little interesting that I've been doing lately. It has nothing to do with work. It's my new thing that I've been kind of hunting and collecting and enjoying. And that is bourbon. And like bourbon this is the hunt for good bourbon bottles no it sounds kind of goofy uh, but that is a thing especially nowadays it seems to be a real thing so i've been going around this last weekend here in virginia see virginia is a place where the government controls the flow of spirits so you have to go to a state run store to get alcohol anything distilled I think is the rule or something and they're the ones in control of it so they do um, instead of letting liquor stores you know get products that are rare and charge you know any more for them or you know whatever it's all like based on just this thing called allocation where they just randomly send certain bottles to stores so you can never really tell who's got what in stock that's on an allocation list it just shows up on a delivery hopefully and you don't know those come in on Tuesdays, so you got to go by on Tuesdays and see if they have anything new. But this last weekend, they actually did an announced bourbon drop where it was like single barrel and a lot of these special. It's about ten different bourbons that they were having, and it was just an allocation list. It was special. It said there were going to be some of these at each of your liquor stores. Your Virginia liquor stores would have. Three or four bottles of this 10 bottle list and they would have a limited amount and as a resident i'm allowed to go get one per store per day i actually don't know all the rules maybe i was only supposed to get one altogether. i'm not sure like 
But what I did was I went to a store a little bit early near me. And um, it was actually fun. I met I met guys from this. There were some amazing. It was there were some all Americans from the uh, from the local football team here, the JMU, James Madison University, and our football team here had some had some players there waiting in line to get whiskey also on the day. So I got to talk to them. That was cool. It was four or five of them. Cause uh You know, they all looked like young and talked like talking like partying and stuff. It was funny. So I definitely got into some conversations with them, talked to them about some bourbon and then Eventually the store opened. I bought my one bottle I was allowed at that store. And I jump in the car and I immediately drive over to a second liquor store in town. The second ABC. It's called ABC here. Go to the second liquor store in town. They have... I think that they had one of the same bottles and then like three different ones than that other place. And so I bought a different bottle there. And then I left there and I went to a third store and I bottled, I bought my third bottle there. And so I had three different bottles of this special release one day event. Cause all this stuff sells out. I mean, they bring in like certain one of these bottles. They only had six. I only had six come into a store, and that was like all the store would get. So, after finding out they would only get a couple of them, I was like, man, I'm just going to try to get as many as I can today, the day it came out. So I went to uh, the three stores, got the three bottles, and then I was out later that night. And I went back to the very first store I went to to begin with and bought a fourth bottle because they had some left of a different kind that I didn't get originally. So I wound up getting a fourth bottle from there because they had a shift change. And since the workers didn't recognize me and know that I bought one earlier and I'm too old to get ID'd and scanned for my ID, no one knew I bought one earlier, so they let me buy another one. And so I got four the first day. I went back to the liquor store yesterday just to see if anything came off the truck. And the other store I went to had one more bottle left. Or one more type of the allocation bottles left. It's the Bullet Bourbon. Single barrel. It's like $65 a bottle. And they had 13 of them left. So they got two cases of this stuff which comes in a 12 bottle case. So cases can be six or 12 bottles. They got tons of this bullet, so nobody bought it all. And uh, they said, you know, you can come back tomorrow and get another one. So I might go get a sixth bottle of it since it's the allocation stuff and I can never tell whether, you know, I'll be able to ever get this again. Hey, self-elected, thank you for the $5 super chat. <laughs> it's not a problem, it's my new hobby, okay? Yeah, I know. That's what my wife said. You don't need to be drinking this all the time. She's probably right, you know? Now, now that I've got it at the like the end of the day, I look at my clock and it's like five o'clock, and it does make you honestly, it does make you want to just like crack open and pour yourself a little drink and say, "Oh, I'm just researching my new hobby, right?" You've been researching that new hobby every day this week, <laughs> but honey. That's that's the conversation you start having. Because for a long time, I was a big beer guy. I still like beer. Don't have a problem with beer. I like it. But I don't know, man. Like, it gets hot in the summertime. It's hard to constantly fill yourself with beer. If you're outside or anything, really. Filling yourself with whiskey probably isn't much, isn't much healthier. The 
methodical solder reflow here. I don't know. Let me see what that's odd at where we are, kind of. Oh, this thing. Some of these parts I've done a couple times because it just looks so bad. I've never tried brewing brew my own beer now, actually. That's cool. I used to have a thing in my garage, in my old shop, that you can see from the original videos of Retro Tech if you go back a couple years in Tennessee. And I had a uh, kegerator, which is an, it was an old 80s model Uh, refrigerator that had a hole drilled in it and a keg tap installed in it and then you go buy kegs of beer and stick them in the kegerator and they would stay fresh you had a co2 cartridge tank in there co2 tank that would keep it you know gassed like they do at the restaurants so you can make a keg last you know i don't know two weeks maybe but you know you can't really drink a, that much beer even in two weeks uh, by yourself so it was kind of a dumb thing to get but I I built it myself it wasn't as if I bought it from somebody like that see when I was in college that was the thing everybody wanted was the beer keg or the kegerator the beer kegerator everybody wanted one and if you like had one, you were instantly cool. Right? What a, what a silly thing, college all together for the most part. I think we got back to happy birthday again. So, definitely. All right, we've gone through our, our playlist here, so that means we've been, yep, we're just about an hour in. Cool. All right, guys, hope everybody's still enjoying the stream here. Thank you all for joining me. Why does a restoration of a CRT cost so much money? Because you have to do this. You want it to really work for a long time. Right. I can breathe again. I've been holding my breath over here. Hey, anyway, we've got this whole section up here done. Yeah. <laughs> the football coach, the football coach would kick me out. He would say you're a bad influence. I've I mean, I'm pretty close to being like in the boosters club over there. That place is it's like my my spot. This is JMU sports stuff. I go to all the football games. I go to lots of the bat on nearly all the basketball games on campus. And I even go to some soccer stuff sometimes. So I'm pretty close to getting on the booster club because I'm always wanting to sit 
like really close. We're in like the club level stuff, and I'm like, how much is that? And I look it up, and I'm like, ooh, never mind. But it's not as bad, because they're not a huge school that... I mean, they're, they're getting bigger, but the um, football program is growing too. But I'm sure that in the next couple of years, they'll go up on the prices. maneuvering that one Sometimes you touch spots and it's like, you can't tell whether anything got done or not. Okay, we're looking good over here. Push one out right there. Yeah, I didn't realize this one was actually together right here. TH16. There we go. Gotta get the cap in the right place. Gotta add solder. Don't get egg on your face. It's jazz. It's jazz. And CRTs. And I'm over here soldering on stuff you guys can't even see. Sorry about that. Yes, sir, Bobby, baby. How we doing here? Everybody ready for a beer? 3.30, not quite yet. <clears throat> See, I'll get I'll get done with this show and I'll feel like, oh yeah, I did something great today. I exercised, I did this stream, I got this board hopefully fixed, and I'll want to drink. And that's how you become probably an alcoholic. See, that was a test point. I got myself confused. I thought that was a resistor. And we just lost test point 90. So. I'll show you. Goofball. And that's a ground cable right there. So I don't want to knock that one out. This is what I was trying to get. The resistor. Goodness gracious. Hit this spot. There we go. Everything's looking fine. Did I get this spot in here? I'm sure, we'll just do it again to be safe. Like I did. Get this fuse. There we go. Now we're doing pretty good. We're moving, working our way back. We'll fix that. Just go ahead and remove that solder just because that'll be easier. So test pole, test point can go back in here. That I removed by mistake. 
So we'll try correct that. Now see, this is going to be tricky because this thing is going to heat up my finger too. So I don't want to do it for too long. Woo! That's hot. I should have just used this to begin with. Okay. And that's good enough. We're not going to add more solder. That's pointless. Oh yeah, there's a there's a couple of devices to hold up. There's the actual Sony um, self elected was asking about what to hook up, what to use to hook up a uh, device that only has RF to a Sony PVM, like an Atari. And probably the easiest thing to do is take and use a VCR, okay? And it doesn't even have to be a working VCR because it can still just do the channel tuner and then you can connect composite video to it. So if it's as long as it's a VHS or VCR with, um, you know, composite video coming out of it, then you can use that. And other than that, there is the tuner unit, which is an actual tuner unit made by Sony. And I've done a video on it. Um, and it's an accessory that is made by Sony for PVMs. And it's made to sit under the 8 inch and 9 inch sized PVMs. Sits under them. And I'll show you all that here in a second. If I can... If I still have one over here in the shop, I should still have one here. But I definitely made a video on it. Gosh, I just can't remember what that video was called. Oh, I just, man, I just broke my rule again. On an inductor, where is it? L something. this one oh it almost came out okay gosh I gotta quit doing that I'm, I'm doing breaking my own rule where I'm desoldering stuff too much or so, putting solder on the wrong points because you can't do if, if, like you'll do this you'll get them both molten and you'll end up pulling the part out I don't want to do that hang on There we go. Okay, sorry about that. That's fixed. So like on these right here, I want to do this leg. And if I do that leg right next to it, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to hop out. So I'll come to that one. After it's had a second to harden. There we go. Yeah, it's TU41 or something. I can't remember the exact model number. I'll, I'll get it for you. All right, we're working our way. Working our way. Almost. We've almost gone through the entire... Gone through this whole stuff over here. 
Just like how this little area... everything there. Let's go in here. We'll hit up these. But those bourbons that I've been buying, some of them, man, they are just crazy, like how strong they are. Something like 130 proof or 65% stuff makes you like mouth feel like it's on fire, numbs you. It's so strong, it's like amazing. <laughs> All right. We've got fresh solder on this quadrant. Let's go over here. So the stream's been going pretty good. I was concerned. Right before I got started, I thought it was going to give me some troubles today. But it doesn't seem to have done that. I don't mind having a little bit of um, big solder blobs. I don't want to have huge ones that are obnoxious and I'm not going to call them blobs. I mean, I just don't mind my welds having look, the look of an extra little bit of solder on them. Because they do. But I don't want to have it too, too much extra where it looks bad and... Even though I'm literally worrying about something that nobody, most of the time people don't look in here and check the quality of their welds, but I'll always know. I'll always know. So I don't want another tech to come behind me and like 15 years and start working on these things and uh, ooh, that was a bad idea find my work and think I was terrible at what I was doing that's actually just a jumper thankfully
There we go. Got everything over here. We need to get a couple things right in this area. go we're getting there I promise but it does give you a good idea how long a restoration project can go because we're only on the power board ouch I just hit my knee on something all right well this area is done Let's set up this transformer over here It does seem to go a long time, doesn't it? It's like, golly, I thought this would be quicker than this. I even thought that. And I've done this on this style of power supply probably, golly, I can't even think how many times I've done this. A lot. Make sure that's just shielding. Heat sink, I mean... All right, I'm looking here. I believe we just hit the last spot that needs the fresh solder. There we go. Hey, James. Thanks for coming in. Hey, Strong. I am reflowing the whole board, McCheese. Thank you for coming. I am. I just got done actually reflowing the whole board. There you go, like you're getting a good idea here. How long all this takes? Where did I put my water? It's fine. Alright. Now we'll go ahead and install some new capacitors. How about that? Excellent. I think everything's going good. We still have a little more time. Let's start with our smaller capacitors in here. Put them over the side here. And like I said, there's going to be a whole mix of brands here. Some Nishikon, Panasonic, a tiny one, maybe even a Rubicon, and then Worth. So, first up... We could start, let's start, oh, in this section. C616. It's the first one we pulled out. She said, 616, 160 volt, one microfarad. And that's what we have here to install. Let's get them. Get our legs tacked in. There you go, beautiful, beautiful people. We have some beautiful little soldered in legs. There we go. 
C616 installed. Let me push it a little bit like that. There we go. And then we will move on to 613, which is a big one. It's in my Garfield cup. No, not that one. 250.47. So there you go. There's a Michigan. A cap like this could cost like two or three dollars easily. Maybe even four. I'm not sure, but something like this value, this big, this nice, definitely can. So C613 goes right there. And since it's a long leg, I'm not going to. I'm going to trim it some. Now I'll try that. Let's sit for a second, get real hot. There we go. Let that harden. Cool a second. Let's get that opposite leg. Let's get that opposite leg stuck in the place and welded down. There we go. Jet looks good from the other side. Looking good. Looking good right here. Okay. Two down, eight to go. Now if we continue on in this zone... Probably should move down to this zone because the rest are this section. There's nothing else over there. Why don't we do this middle section? This is going to be a lot of the smaller ones. And remember, I need to change some capacitors here. C623. 50 volt 22. It was originally a 25 volt 22. So, it's fine for me to go up just a tad on this one. That voltage increase should be perfectly safe. It's just you don't want to go lower on voltage. And you don't want to change microfarads unless you know for a, reason, for a fact you need to. Sometimes you do need to, but not. Not just because you want to for no reason. Or because you think it's safe. Sometimes it's not safe. Most of the time it is not safe. 623 in the spot. Let's see. 620. I think this is the one I do not have. 620, right. 617. Which one's that? There's a 50 volt 0 0.47 617. So we'll stick that one in there. What's 619? 50 volt 10. Which is this other red one. So we'll go ahead and do these two. And then I'm going to have to get the cap from the back stock that goes right there. We'll do that one after we, after we weld these two in. We'll get that one done. We'll grab that cap out of the storage, or the shop, I call it my shop stock. It's just my stock of capacitors that I try to keep on hand there. They're ones I use a lot, fairly common. All right, isn't there enough, yay or nay? Yay, I'd say. Okay. There we go. Turn these legs down and we'll reflow that. Now 
we gotta go get a 25 volt 47 if we have it 16 volt 47 if we have it <clears throat> and i don't need another zero okay We're going to go with Needless Overkill here. Go for a 50 volter. Go all the way from a 10 volt to a 50 volt. Gosh, that's tight too. It's going to be okay though. Everything's going good. Everything looks good here. Got oh another lovely, wonderful day in the shop. Let's see what what's the next one we want to put in. So we've gotten all these done now. Those all look fine. Everything's good, goody, 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 goody. So we have these two. A big one. Should one more big one. Right? There's a 50 volt 1000. Where's that one go? 674. Oh, that goes there. So big one there, big one there. And then I've got two small ones. Which one did I not? Hmm. I'm sure that... Oh, I see it. It's hiding right there. Okay, I think that this is 671, right there, 16 volt 470. Hopefully, hopefully that crack didn't somehow get worse or anything when I was working on this, but um, it does make me wonder a little bit about it. So the two big ones left, which of course I have another snap-in capacitor for. And then this big one right here. Go right there. Sometimes you get a nice little pop from a bubble, like exploding from all the heat in there. Can you solder? Excellent. All right, now we have a big mama. Before big mama, we got. One more small one we can stick in here. There we go. So 
I have something being delivered tomorrow that's going to be worked on. It should be pretty unique and amazing. That is a B&O television. An official United States B&O television that is really rare. And the gentleman who's bringing it is coming from a long way. And he tells me that he used to work for B&O back in the 90s when they were trying to release this TV to the United States. And it was just a kind of a mess. So, kind of interesting um, to finally, after all this time, it's take, that's a TV I've never seen before. It's taken all this time to finally get a B&O in the shop and any capacity so that's pretty exciting that's something you don't see very often just clean up this capacitor we got one more big boy snap in our own, of our own there we go and this is an elna cap i can only find elna of oh, this one it's still in brand it's still in business Yeah, something like that, maybe. I can't remember the exact model. But we'll find out, because it will be here. Like I said, it's supposed to be getting dropped off tomorrow afternoon, possibly, I think. So that I believe my schedule says. I keep everything in a schedule now, so I don't lose my mind and my sanity. And don't lose what I'm doing. Uh, I've also got a D20 in the shop that I've really got to get working on. i got to finish that FW900. Those are like the... I gotta finish the FW900 and that, um, which the FW900 is literally just needing, uh, to get a couple wind DOS adjustments that I'll run. I'm not going to run all the adjustments available for it, but I'll run some of them and then shell put on it and then it'll be good. Now, the D20 has not been started yet. The D20. And the B&O. And then a couple more Sony's will be in here over the weekend. To keep me busy till mid to late August, honestly. Right before the convention. All right, everything looking good, right? Got everything looking good from this side. Now what we're going to do is turn all our stuff off and I'm going to need to clean up the back of this board here with some rubbing alcohol and brushes. All right, brush kits. Here we go. Let's get this guy cleaned up. Get it all cleaned up and back together. Excuse me, goodness gracious. Now this is okay, and it probably wouldn't be any issue to leave it as it is right now, but I'm not doing that because I like to have the boards be pretty clean if I can get them that way. So you just rub over the boards, some isopropyl alcohol, try not to put any pressure really on it. It's too heavy. 
Because we don't want to bend it anymore, even though that breaks up there. And the power supplies, thankfully, are smaller. And smaller, right? Not not huge, like the deflection board. So oftentimes, it doesn't take as long to clean them. I don't think I've ever used anything from B&O, so I'm excited to see what the build quality is like inside and things. And the features. And the features. Yes, sir. all that side now let's get on this broken side <laughs> I can definitely see like how it curves a little bit so it does make me a little concerned but I, I think this board's gonna be fine as far as functionality hopefully Just once you see something, sometimes you can't unsee it. nice and stinky in here now throw a couple of fresh towels on here just gonna rub that on the back now kind of soak up some of that extra stuff come on Look at all that nasty stuff, though. Thanks, DJ Bob. All right. So, we could probably hook some tubes up sometime. We could probably hook some tubes up sometime. I've got a rejuvenator that doesn't really work. Probably blow up the tubes. I'm working on that stupid machine so many times and it doesn't want to work for me. And I'm talking about my rejuvenator. Really wish I could find one that I knew was good. So this one is still kind of heavily saturated in alcohol, obviously, from what I did to it. So it's going to need a second gonna, to dry up. I'm probably going to go put it in front of a fan. We can get all that off there. 
just like that. So it looks good, but I need to blow all the residue. Blow up the tubes. I know, it doesn't really... Climb. There's no climax to it. It's not like... There's no, like, cool effect by putting the uh, electron gun and just blowing up the electron guns. I don't know how to make the tube implode without hitting it with something. Which maybe we could do that eventually, too. Just not inside. Okay, we're gonna have to give that a few minutes to get dried off now after all that. It's quite a ordeal. So we recapped it, we reflowed all the solder. Don't know that we'll need we will need some brushes again. But what do you guys think? You have any questions? I know what we can do while we wait for that. Let's take a look at uh let's take a look at these capacitors. We'll run them through the meter. See how many of them show up as bad. Run them through the little uh, testing meter that's supposed to tell me. It's supposed to do this in circuit and we're out of circuit, but it's to tell me if these capacitors are bad on this scale here. So let's go ahead and. Um, just check them out. All right, so here we have 35 volt, 1,000 microfarad. Let's put one on each. And if we look down here, uh, this one's still reading good on an ESR meter, right? So that one could be good. That's why the monitor still was working fine, probably. So if we take this next one, now this one is a... Well, this is a 47 microfarad. 47 microfarad and 47 microfarads over here. So right now, this particular capacitor is actually um, in this yellow zone. So it's, it's suspect is what they call that. So there's one that's suspicious. If anything, right, right we're going to put it like this. That's a good one, so we don't have to worry about that. And this will be suspicious, and then we'll make another pile for red if anything shows up as bad. This is a 470 microfarad, so if it shows up anything over 0.1 on the very bottom, whoops, uh, if it shows anything over 0.1, it's going to be bad. Ooh, so yeah, look, we got a point two. So this is this is definitely suspicious and bad. I mean, so it should be in the bad pile. Okay, good, suspicious, bad. That's pretty funny how we had to uh, just do three capacitors in a row like that to get good, bad, and the ugly. So this is a ten volt, forty seven microfarad. So let's see what it's. It's at 0 0.8 to, whoop, it's going up, it's going up to 1.2, back to 0.8. So it's, it's a suspect, suspicious. Very sus. Another 10 microfarads. So this one can go all the way up to 2 and still be considered good. 1.0. So definitely not all the way to, not even close to a suspect. Now, a 0 0.47 microfarads. This can go all the way up. This one going to have a high ESR right there. It can go all the way up to like 6 and still be considered. Oh, but we're in the 8. We're in the 8, so we're suspicious. And sometimes if it's bad, it'll beep for you. It'll say, hey, look, man, that one's reading bad. Beep, beep, beep. If it's good, it'll just do a beep. 
This is a 22. 22 microfarad. Wow, that one got up there. What did that say? 1.2 for a 22. Gosh, that's so close to suspicious. So suspicious. It's just, it's if it's one away, it's suspicious. Oh man, we got back to the holiday music. Sorry guys. Wasn't paying attention. I just must have gone through bur birthday song again. Sorry about that. Next time we do a stream, I'll have some new music. And it's probably not too loud for you, so you can't hear it. This is a one microfarad. I'm not even getting a reading on this one. 2.0, but that's in the safe zone. Safe zone. No, wrong way. It's a one microfarad. Gosh, that's suspect. So that's a one microfarad. It's up in the yellow. Now this one is wider than I'd really care. I don't want to um, stretch my tool out and just touch those. So let me show you the solution here. So just take these little clip on with alligator clips and I'll put the red end here on red and then I'll put that on the positive end of the capacitor okay and same thing go use the white one for the uh, other end let's see what this says okay see we got a nice good reading there What's that say? Oops, jumping around 1.5 to 2.0. 2.0 is what we're sitting on. And for a 560 microfarad, my goodness. 560 microfarad. Oh, yeah. That's way red. This big filter cap is reading bad. Definitely time to change that one out. Glad we did that one. Stretch my tool out. Yeah, I don't want to stretch my <laughs> unnecessarily tool unnecessary tool stretching. So there you go. We got uh two of them that were reading pretty much bad. These two. Now the monitor still functioned, and these caps are not leaking visibly or any kind of invisible in any visible danger. Uh these red is suspicious. Meaning they should not be trusted. They're suspects. All five of these. And the minority group. Well, no, actually, sorry. The smaller group would have been the bad ones. There's only two of those. There's three of the good ones. These red. Good. Those all red. Good. Let me go see how our uh, board is drying. We'll bring it back in here and do some final cleaning on it and we'll do some QA steps on it and then see we should have plenty of time to test it there shouldn't be any reason why we can't test it you guys have been so nice to sit here through this whole class today right should at least be able to see if it works Now, let's see how we did. Everything is looking pretty good. We're going to dust off all that nasty dust residue, alcohol residue, whatever we want to call that stuff. From the, like, dust mixed with our rubbing alcohol. So 
So I'm going to take this brush, which is a non-conductive paint brush. And just knock a lot of that off. Now we are painting like Bob Ross. This is, this is your Bob Ross moment. Okay. I'm going to flip her over. And that's pretty much it. Goodness. Clean, clean, clean. How about that? See how much better that looks? That's what we call cleaned up. And let me get the shell. All right. You're never going to get these things fully like spotless without a device like an ultrasonic cleaner. But if you want to go and do what I'm doing, like brush over it three, four, five times, it does get more and more of that debris off. And there we have it, folks. There we have it. Oh, you're welcome, Andres. Thank you. So let's set this and reinstall this in our board here. We gotta push down so it can get snapped in just like that. Gonna clean it one more time. Okay. This is it. This is it. Recap. Wonderful F board. I don't believe there's a piece of shielding normally that goes over this one. Maybe there is. Let me check. No. All right. So, here's the big question. Can I plug in my other camera and have it show up? It's been unplugged the whole time. Let's see it. Here's the we'll try. I'll shut down. Sometimes my system gets a little overdone if I put in too many uh, too many uh, um, peripherals. Let's see if the shop cam will just show up. No, of course not. No, so okay. I don't think I'll be able to get that. Let me see if I could press maybe no oh there we go hang on I'm gonna do that okay great there we go now you can see me right so this is the other camera and um, 
I was trying to get it to work. Let's see if the shop view will just... Of course the shop view is not working by itself. Okay, hang on. Let me let me add... There we go. Okay. There we go. Sorry, guys. I'm going to move this around. So there's our 1340 up there. I'm sorry about this camera view, it's just not coming together. All right. Oh, you're fine to ask questions. I just don't sometimes see them. I'm sorry, my cheese. Hang on. If this works, uh, I'll be able to answer some questions, but I'm going to try to install this real quick. And we're just going to test and see, and then I'll, no matter what happens, I'll probably take a break and ask, answer some questions after I, um, and try this out. So again, I'm taking the power supply we just worked on and we're going to move over here and put it in. Okay, now it's gonna. You're not gonna be able to see anything on this until I plug in a console. All right. All right, folks. We need some of those big bucks, no whammies here. We're about to turn this thing on and see what it does.
All right, everything's everything's sounding normal. Everything's sounding normal. There we go. We're good, folks. All right, hooray. It is all good, everybody. See if I can add my face in here. Should be able to. Hello, hello, you lovely machine. It's so wonderful. So wonderful of you to work for us. So that's live feed right there, folks. Right over here to the side of me. So, audio out. I don't know what you're trying to do for audio out. If you want to ask your question, let's see. I have a 1402 connected to external speakers. I run straight from the cable, not from the monitor. I'm not sure. Gonna ask your question again, but maybe Keith got you straightened out. Thanks for coming in, Keith. Yeah, if you have an issue with the audio on these monitors, it's best to just say almost screw it and not use it. The BVMs and higher end monitors didn't even have speakers. This is a PVM thing. Yeah, you just need to get something adjustable. You can't you can't like run something into the PVM and have it. Not this model, or that 14L2. Now, if it was something like a uh, 2030, 2530 that have the built-in stereo audio amps, then you can add speakers that are different to it. But not this one. Guys, that is it. How about that? We got it fixed. I want to thank everybody today for joining me. We hit two hours on this stream, 430. This is about a good time to let it uh, sit here. And... I'm, I'm going to let it run for a few hours just to make sure there's no issues. That power supply should be good now after our repair. Man, we could have gone... If that would have been any more severe or a board that I was worried about shorting out against anything, I would have put some new solder mast on it after cleaning it. And I may go back and do that. I'm not sure. It doesn't really seem very necessary for the particular repairs we did today. But... That would be a, also a good touch for that circuit board. But definitely had fun with you guys today. Thank you for showing up. And if you missed anything, you want to go back to the beginning. This stream has been pretty much not a lot of, you know, fluff and nonsense. We must, we just been here for two hours repairing and uh, restoring this power supply. So that's a good idea. Look at that. Two hours of labor. About 10 capacitors. A little bit of solder and uh other materials and that's a pretty normal job so what i'll do now is i will come back and i'm i'm gonna recap the chassis for the main board as well as do the um uh, neck board so if i have time tomorrow i might come on and do just a short one where we work on the neck board uh and then maybe get some things ready for the main board okay 
So if you want to come back tomorrow, put your alerts on, and, and I possibly will be streaming around this time tomorrow. If not tomorrow, then Friday. But you guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one. Uh...